Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and I'm here once again with Roger from Roger's Orchids Hi. Whom, whom you'll all know and we're going to link to Roger's channel up above if anybody doesn't know it already then you really do have to check out Roger's wonderful channel such a font of information about orchids if you're lucky <laughs> and I'm in the mood <laughs> yeah and you don't piss them off so that's okay then <laughs> oh, that's difficult to do. <laughs> So anyway, this video is going to be a Cattleya update on my Cattleya orchids that have spent the summer in the greenhouse to get more light. So we're indoors now in what is fondly referred to as my grow room, but which Roger knows is actually my daughter's bedroom. And we're looking at the plants, the majority of the plants that have spent the summer in the greenhouse just to get more light and they're predominantly Cattleyas. And we're just going to talk through some few of them and Roger of course who grows a number of Cattleyas himself will have insights that I'll perhaps have overlooked. So I suppose really Roger the first thing that strikes me is that when I had these plants in the greenhouse over summer a lot of them became really really pale yellow and within a week or two of being moved indoors that color has largely reverted to a less <laughs> intense <laughs> or less light color which is just i don't know just strange i think um i mean i've, I've never experienced it because um obviously my plants stay inside in the grow room and um Normally there's a layer of shade netting to filter the sun so that they, they wouldn't get the sort of intense light that these have been subjected to and exceptionally so this year because mm. although Ireland didn't get the, the level that we got on the south coast of the UK they did get that intense light every single day when the days are at their longest so these plants have probably never experienced that level of light and there is a natural True. paling with Cattleyas under those light conditions and for many Cattleyas that's absolutely perfect. <laughs> it's just it's what they strange need. <laughs> isn't it because like it looks to an untrained eye that this is a bad thing the plants look unhealthy they look deficient in some uh, nutrient uh, or other but it's not the case with Cattleyas at it, all. It can be very worrying if it's the first time it's happened to you you know you bought a plant sort of late summer early autumn and it was a good green colour and it's gone through your winter and then it's come out into the spring and then suddenly all, you, all your leaves turn yellow and you think my plant's going down what's wrong with my plant it's a natural thing as long as it doesn't go to two extremes because there's a level of um, light that will start burning and mm. when we talk about light burn that's a different thing to heat burn um, heat burn will brown leaves they'll go crispy light burn will pale them and if it goes beyond the level the plant can tolerate, you get cell damage. And then that yellow will never recover. The leaf will eventually die. And it so. tends to be in patches as well, I yes, think, the, yes, um, the yes. latter one of those. Well, and light burn will tend to hit the top leaves. Heat burn will hit, will hit all of them, even the lower leaves, because the heat's mm. uniform over the whole plant. Whereas the light does tend to come in at least at an angle from the top down. So the top leaves get the light burn more than anything. And I did get light damage on a number of these plants, one of which is the Cattleya mossiae, which I'm trying to zoom in on down here. Now this is one that needs highlight, but obviously I moved it um, too quickly into full, um, well, into almost full sun. And the result has been some burnt patches on the leaves, which I've cut off. And that's what we see down here with the cinnamon. Because this plant actually has sufficient leaves to not mind losing a few. So I didn't feel bad about that. But the good news with this particular one is that I do have two new sheets. Well, I was just gonna say, there's at least one sheet I can this. see. Yeah. Now, this is the second time this plant is actually sheathed for me and they were blind the previous time, so it didn't result in any flowers. But I'm hopeful that this time round, I'm going to get some flowers. I've got two, one, and it's actually really hard to point this out, and I know Roger really can't see it all, because it's but right at the front. <laughs> pumping that extra light in for that period of time may just be the thing that fires those sheaths. But there's quite a few cattleyas produce their sheath at sort of like the end of the growing season, 
but their blooming season is spring. That's right, and, and this so is a spring sheath, bloomer. Yeah, that yeah. type of sheath can often just go brown and it looks like it's never going to bloom and then suddenly the spike will come up. Through. And in fact I was hopeful for a long time for that particular one with the other sheets after they went brown but those have their brown oh, a couple of years now so I really don't think <laughs> they're going to produce a bud now at this late stage and but maybe the new ones. Back to what Rachel was saying if you're going to do indoors, outdoors, indoors, outdoors Trust me, working with cameras most of my life, nothing to do with orchids necessarily, we're standing in a bright window on what was a sunny day two minutes ago, but there's a cloud come over, and it looks really bright. Yeah, It's not here, but it is that side. Yeah. And although my eyes are adjusting, I know it's quite bright in here. The level of light here where I'm standing is nothing like the same as out there on a cloudy day. As soon as you take plants from inside to outside, your light increases dramatically. Don't do it all at once, and don't do it on your brightest sunny day. It's like, you know, coming out of a dark room into sunshine. You stand there blinking your eyes trying to get used to it. And um, the orchids are going to do the same. will suffer a dramatic, quite honestly, they suffer with any dramatic change in any element of their lives. Dramatic change of medium, you know, dramatic Such change of light, plants, huh? yeah, <laughs> dramatic change of in environment, humidity levels, or anything like that. Try and do everything nice and gently, nice and easy going. And don't go mad. <laughs> Simply just that with anything. And just to let everybody know that this window here is actually a south facing window and this is the way I grow my cattleyas for most of the year. So on this window here in the grow room facing out south facing. But as both Roger and myself know, uh, or both Roger and myself have experienced, we now have grow lights. Yes. So my plan is to use the grow light that I have on these particular plants. And that may involve moving the table out of here completely, just into, well, let's just say, uh, uh, the centre of another room that isn't adjacent to windows. And just seeing how well that grow light, which seems very strong, can help my cattleyas bloom. So I think that's what I'm going to do with my particular grow light. I mean, I'm hoping, because Oliver's got one as well, so there's three people I know have got exactly the same grow light, you know, uh, under the same circumstances, do a video re <laughs> review and get one free. I'm up for that. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know how Oliver's going to use his yet, but um, I was showing my daughter my grow light, and it happened to be after dark in the house with the lights on, and I turned it on and it lit up all of my lounge and dining room area brightly. Now when I unboxed it and turned it on in daylight, it did seem a bright light. You might remember it got pointed at the camera. I could, I could sense everybody backing up, <laughs> even though it was like, at that stage it was a Even video. those in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so back, where they back up to from the States, I don't know. But um, yeah, basically it's a lot brighter than I thought. And bearing in mind my idea of using it is to merely extend the day length for some of the plants. And with those little seedlings I've got, you know, three will get the normal grow room and three will get the extended daytime just to see the effect. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, that particular dendrobium is one that should slow down a bit and cool down in the winter. But you don't do that with seedlings. You don't treat your seedlings the way you treat your adult plants. You grow your seedlings on. Yeah. And try and maintain yeah, that and growth constant, pattern. Yeah. Constant yeah. moisture. So don't worry about light. what they're going to be as adults. And don't bother with, I mean, would you bother with dormancy for seedlings? Never. I, mean, Never. I wouldn't no. either. No. Yeah. I don't care how real, I mean, I, don't forget, I, there are some orchid types I don't do that do have true Yeah, dormancy. never say never. There's always an exception to every rule. It's I'm not having a point. catacetum. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one that really needs the true dormancy. It's not a rest, it's a true dormancy. There aren't that many orchids that do that in the strictest sense. There are many that have a rest period, including, as I learnt this morning, reading a book, that some of the cattleyas have got a distinct rest after blooming. And they do just stop and they go, I'll call it a rest, because it isn't a true dormancy, I don't believe. But, yeah. you know, you get that watering right down, because they're not growing. They stop, they have a period from anything from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, try and find out your individual species, and then um, they come back into growth again, and then you start your watering and get some feed. And I think what Roger's saying here is really important, because when I started out in Cattleya growing, 
I read about Cattleya's knee needing what was classified as a dormancy in winter and just did completely the wrong thing. I mean, it was just too harsh with them. So anybody who's new to orchid growing out there, just bear in mind that Cattleya's for winter need a rest rather than a dormancy. Don't be too cruel to them, nothing too drastic or too, well, too drastic. And um, but yeah. It, it's also worth remembering that Many cattleyas are autumn into winter bloomers. They, they mature their growth through the growing season and then they do their flowering thing. But some of them don't bloom until the spring. Well, if they need a little bit of a shutdown after blooming, you're looking at later spring to actually give them their little bit of rest, which doesn't feel right. In your mind, you're thinking it's the growing season now. I need these things right. watered and fed. And that might not be the best thing for that individual cattleya. So it's worth just doing a bit of research. And if in doubt, contact Rachel and she'll look it up in her book. <laughs> <laughs> That's dropped you, isn't it? <laughs> oh, stop there. Uh, Listen, shall we have a look and see if we can see anything exciting happening with these plants in terms of sheaths? Yes, because um, um, they do sneak up on you when you're not looking. Because um, um, I did notice, I was just showing Roger before we switched on the camera, my George King Serendipity over here, which is a beautiful pink hybrid that I mentioned in my live streaming with my green pets there recently. has a sheath, and there is no darkness inside that sheath yet, which m m may mean that it's yet to come, or may mean that it's not going to bother. But I'm just looking at this particular sheath. It does have a kind of point on it. And that might indicate that it's going to become a leaf rather than a, um, a sheet that bears a, a bud. But, I mean, it is a unifoliate plant, as Roger pointed out. Is it uniformly, uniformly unifoliate? In yes, words, there isn't so a, another one with a, two leaves on it. But every Cattleya, whether a unifoliate or a bifoliate, will produce... <laughs> something it'll, different. It'll so play games. It'll play games. Again. So the ones with one leaf will occasionally produce two and the ones with two leaves will occasionally produce one yeah. or three. And, well, I was going to say, <laughs> one I've got decided to throw three out on one particular bulb. So, yeah, but, uh, we'll be f quietly confident that this one is going to produce something And again, it's another good. thing that if you've had a cattleya from a relatively young plant that's always had two leaves per pseudo bulb, and then suddenly it pushes up a larger pseudo bowl, but it only has one leaf. Don't panic. They, mm. they just do that sometimes. Good and advice. You, you can't really give it a definitive reason why, but if you're into the hybrids, it can often be a throwback to, to one, of, one the of the parents that could be right. two or three. So like a recessive ago. gene. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that, chemical that's the expression I was trying to think of. Yeah. But yeah, so don't worry too much. If it looks like a bifoliate, one leaf on a bulb is not the end of the world. And, and vice versa, and as I said, occasionally they'll throw up three and you know really worry you. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just have a quick look at my walk Ariana. Can you? No, there it is. Let's see. So you get Roger to, to hold that. Right? You hold that for me now. Oh, that's a lovely little miniature. Isn't it a cute? You see, now if I just saw that growing in the wild, I wouldn't dream that was a cattleya. Not with bulbs that shape. That's right. It's that's almost weird. like a bulbophyllum, isn't it? And even the leaves. Um, oh. Not not only the almost oval shape rather than elongated, but this cupping effect of the pairs of leaves. I haven't seen a cattleya that way that looks like that ever. A nice not, nice the, strong new growth on it. Yeah, and the, the the roots are so mad as well. They're so thick. It's you know. Yeah, you see in there. I mean, these, these are very thick roots, it's like some of the largest cattleyas on a plant. Um, well, just to get the impression of the size. This is a small plant. Very so, unusual shape. So we're taking bets. Are we going to have a sheath in that? In that. Is this ever bloomed? Or no, is it? All it's right. never. So this, it's a this, highlight one. This could be it. This and could if, be it. <laughs> and it's had that highlight this year. So. You heard it first from Roger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm. very good. And um, let me see. I have another couple of stubborn non-bloomers. I'm not going to try and put that back on. I just put that down here. So um, <clears throat> can you reach out that one there at the front there, Roger? This one or this one? That one. That one. So this is another stubborn one. Which which one is that? Rincalalia. Oh, it's got Rinko on it. <laughs> Rincalalia. Is it Glauca? I think it won't come out. Oh, Digbiana. Ah, I was going to say, if it's Glauca, good luck getting that to bloom. <laughs> I had one for four years. Not a light. Uh, and that therein lies the problem. Uh, light. 
Yeah. The, the, the level of intensity to get that one to bloom is beyond what you'd imagine a plant could take without burning. But um, grow lights have got to assist with this kind of difficult plant yes, as well. Yes, yeah. so. well, it's not going to assist with mine because it's somebody else's it's gone. got it now. <laughs> <laughs> I got fed up with waiting. <laughs> I think Alberto from Orchidaholic Channel flowered one of these a while yeah. back and it was absolutely magnificent. However, he was in Italy, so... Yes, you know. it's... it's, it's the intensity of light is difficult to see with your eyes, but on the brightest sunny day in the UK, that's still not the light level you would get down in the Mediterranean areas. Yeah. You know, you're just closer to the sun, basically. It is brighter, even though your eyes don't tell you that. So but Digbiana, isn't that the one that has quite frilly blooms, quite large and quite frilly? Mm, yeah. I've just got a distant recollection. Yes, that's recollection. right, that's right. Yeah, I just think Gulf Green Hair Pig is one of the cultivars that's ah, derived right, from yeah. that. And which is the newest growth? It looks like that one there, doesn't it? Uh, I would say this was the previous one and this is the latest one. Yeah. And, and that's coming off a lead that if I hadn't seen that new growth, I'd say that lead's not going to go anymore. It stopped and this is the lead that's left. That's not that old a bulb. Um, but this is, I would say, the latest one, and that's a bit of luck because that. Uh, I must there, admit, there's some. If that yeah. wasn't there, I'd say that you're not going to get anything else out of that one. This is now the current growth area, yeah. and this may well die back, but it hasn't. So good it. <laughs> Two leads, always better than one. However, no sign of anything in there. No, I don't see any sign of sheaths anywhere. Oh well. That's far too young to be far enough open to sort of see the whether or not it's going to flower. But that's going to be a lot easier to bloom, I would imagine, than the actual Glauca, which is, that is difficult, yeah. that one. <laughs> I do have Glauca somewhere, by the way, All for right. my sins. One more, let's have a look at one more. What do you fancy? What else have we got then? Something else. Something that can be lifted without two hands. <laughs> that isn't without going to bringing knock everything, everything down. Yeah, without knocking everything flying. This is interesting. That's a dendrobium, a relatively new one there. The tall um, With the frame? One. Or the uh, one without? Behind the frame. Yes, the one you're pointing at now. This one? Without the frame. Right. It's a relatively new plant for me that I got in oh, Dresden. Lovely um, new growth on it. That's and thank sure. you, Ronya, for bringing that to me from Orchids and More in Germany. She brought it down to the Dresden show for me. And it's one of these um, dendrobiums that has the black um, hairs on the cane or well not that evident not on this that one I must admit <laughs> that's why I bought it anyway that's my story and I'm sticking to it oh it's um, I can't remember the expression the technical expression but I just call them black hair type but on some of them it's really evident you know they yeah. really do look like they need a shave like a like that, a, a like spider I, almost like I will tomorrow morning because I didn't bring a shave and stuff <laughs> oh no help <laughs> You Check back you tomorrow said, for a video of unshaved you said casual, Roger. and when somebody says casual, I read scruffy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, that's um. And then, uh, Have you any um advice to give me on this no. particular one? Um, Sandre, Have a new growth there. Sandre, I don't know. Um, what I do with dendrobiums is I just look at the shape to get a picture of style. Um, so looking at the older part of the plant, it does look like. At some point the canes will become deciduous. This cane has lost leaves down one side but not the other side so mm -hmm. it's, it's only half gone. Um, that's a terminal leaf so that won't grow anymore. Over this side that's I would say what a more mature cane should look like. Uh, that's the example on this plant. Again it's not going to grow anymore. Terminal leaf. And now is the time to find out what it really looks like because this may not be quite the same as the rest. This could grow half as big again as that one. Or twice Unless, as big. Say uh, twice as big. <laughs> well, then it won't fit under your grow light. It'll be up near the same thing. <laughs> but, yeah, and, and when you get a plant, I mean, in theory, this is about as tall as it's going to get because you've got two canes almost of equal height, okay. which in theory means it's settling. Right. Um, that still doesn't mean that that latest growth might do something different. And sometimes your new growths after buying one that's got mature canes don't get as tall as the original. Uh, it's because they're acclimatising that, to new yeah, growing and conditions. And it could also be the conditions it came from. Um, could have been growing out in Malaysia and now it's in Ireland. And Ireland is not Malaysia, light levels day lengths again. Exactly. But yeah, that's the one to tell. So if this cane grows up and looks almost identical to that one, then that's what the plant's going to look like. Right. So this is your telltale one, but that is a lovely strong new growth. 
and a shed load of roots underneath it that's what we like to see thank you Diff very much roger always a knowledgeable person when it comes to dendrobium and all guesswork of course <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of our video on my cattleyas in the grow room and and a sneaky dendrobium that got in there yeah two. you snuck that one in didn't you roger? did i all right then i'm sure you did <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching and check back again. I'm sure we'll make some more videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're rattling them off. <laughs> okay, bye for now. Bye for now.